So we have set up an IP pool and now we are going to implement and configure some NSX control con controllers. So um, basically the NSX controllers we always need to deploy those in, in an odd number to avoid split brain situations. So we either deploy one, but we can only do this in the lab, and three is recommended and then we go to five, seven, etc. as long as, as it's well uh, an odd number. Um, after we've deployed uh, the NSX controllers we are going to use the distributed resource scheduler uh, to make sure that the controllers will stay on a specific uh, uh, ESX host. So that means we are going to deploy three controllers and two of them are going to be on one of the ESX I hosts and one of them is going to be on the, on the other one just to avoid split brain situations okay so let's go and go to network and security we can see the N6 manager here let's select it uh, well, I actually need to go to installation here and I'm going to uh, add another N6 controller so the manager the data center is E we're going to put it in the management cluster, the data store. The host that I want to put this one, the first one on is well, first host. Folder is not really necessary to mention. I want to connect it to this network here. I can have it to standard and distribute it. I will use the standard one here. And the IP pool we just created in the last movie is this IP pool here the password that I'm going to assign is VM where VM where can I choose this password so let's choose another one then Okay, this is getting annoying. There you go. So we can see the first controller being deployed and it uses the first IP address in the IP pool that I'm and that I that I actually assigned. So let's deploy another one. I'm going to deploy exactly three. Two of them on the first host. We need to wait until there's an active controller, so let's wait for this to deploy. And you can see here that the first NSX controller is deployed and the status is set to normal. So let's try to add another one. and it's deploying a third one I'm not sure why it's deploying a third one here or it's calling it three I think because the first one went wrong um, but let's try to add another one and we'll probably call it four which I think cosmetically wise it's a little bit disturbing but uh, I think it will just work fine the third controller or uh, I will actually deploy another host 
und just the same happy pool. I hope I can rename this by the way. But let's see what's, ha what, what, what's happening actually right now. Well, see both controllers here being deployed. Um, I need to set the distributed resource scheduler rules or the affinity rules, um, and I will do that after these two are deployed. Uh, you see that during the deployment of controller three and four, there was a little disconnect of controller one, and then you still see that three and four is now. While still being deployed, you can see that the third, or yeah, actually the second controller, is fully deployed and set to normal. The naming convention is a little bit uh, disturbing here, um, but it's the second controller, and the third one is still busy with deploying, so we have to wait for that one as well interesting development is that we uh, that I just saw that the controller 1 and controller 3 went to disconnect and now they're back to normal but the controller 4 is still deploying so we can see that all three controllers are now well fully deployed and the status is set to normal um, I think we need to set up the distributed resource scheduler right now and set up the DRS anti affinity rules just to make sure that well these controllers are not well put on the same host so we need to go to vCenter host and clusters and can go to the management cluster and before we do that we first need to turn on vSphere DRS because otherwise we cannot enable the rules or put in some rules so we see DRS rules here let me add one and let me name it And this means that I want to have these two controllers here always together on one host. So that's one rule. And I'll probably add one more where I will separate virtual machines. Where, which I will say NSX where I want to have two and three actually never together So just to make sure that two are always kept together and the, and, uh, the other combination of two will basically never be together. Um, that's it. So we will continue with preparing the host clusters for the network virtualization 
and I will do that in the next video. Before I do that, by the way, let me look at the amount of virtual machines that are actually deployed. And here we see the NSX controllers. They don't really have a cool name here. I don't know why that is. I can probably rename them. And I'm not sure what the first one is, what the second one is, what the third one is. Maybe we can find out by looking at the summary. Ah, this one is the second one. So let me try to rename this one. Oh, there is a problem here. This one is the second one. This one is the first one. And this one is the third one. Yes, so let's go to the first one. And let me try to rename it. Okay, that worked. This one's the second one. And this one is the third one. So they all have a new name. And I'm still not happy with the name, by the way. So let's do it again. I love to have consistency. There you go, now I'm happy with the naming. And if I go back to home, go back to the controllers, uh, this is still uh, annoying, but uh, at least they're there.